Welcome to Chapter 15. August 2019 UHK Kalani. In August 2019 I covertly taped a mater cardiologist while showing him an ECG of myself, dated 2011. It was a heart attack after an overdose which that London hospital pretended was just me play acting. The ECG said things like supraventricular tachycardia, epicardial injury, and he he said it was completely normal. He added these machines are stupid and they lie all the time. Trust me you are normal. I was nomadic and homeless until March 2021. So in August 2019, I was mostly staying in Dublin by had a short stay at the inexpensive railway hostel in Killarney. There I landed in hospital. My next hospital story goes on to August 2019. I was admitted to University Hospital of Kerry, Tralee for three days. It was the same thing a cardiac episode. I was wheeled into this place called a coronary care unit in Skellig Ward. One admitted the doctors told me that there's nothing wrong with my heart. But one lady doctor added you must take bisoprolol every single day of your life for the rest of your life. I asked why should I do that if my heart is completely normal. She said it is just to protect you. I realized that she was one of many who wanted to lie to me that my heart was normal. But she was concerned for my well-being and did not want me to throw my medicines away. Just because they were giving me this false information. That's why she added that I must take my bisoprolol even though well even though my heart was normal. Well, I do understand English. The choice of words of this lady doctor bothered me. She said, every day for the rest of your life. Without being able to explain this fully, I felt she was thinking about my death. If a doctor is thinking about my death, it must be illness related. Related to the illness I have come in for, I thought to myself, surely, a person who is going to die from an illness, be it one year, two years, or five years from the present day, surely, such a person should not be taking a tablet of bisoprolol every single day without fail till they die. It is not right. Why? Because, when a person gets worse the doctor is supposed to take care of them. Dosages will increase or, other medicines will take their place. As a patient gets worse and worse, the treatment has to change. My conclusion then, around the 26th of August 2019, was that doctors were never going to give me any treatment and I was going to die in God's time. This lady doctor was saying to take one bisoprolol every day without fail till I die, as she was prophesying that I was never going to get medical intervention in my life, except for the bisoprolol that had already been prescribed. I had to cling to that single recommendation of bisoprolol to prolong life. It is almost August 2023 now. So, four years down the road nothing has been done for me. It looks like I will take bisoprolol for the rest of my life. My overall condition, while it is deteriorating, is not advancing heart failure too fast. At least my legs are not swelling, but weird things are happening to the rest of my body and I am becoming more immobile. Meanwhile that finding of normal for my ECG has proved itself to be permanent. I feel the unbelievable is true. Which is the entire medical profession years. Through several years and as I moved to different cities have a policy that they don't want to make public to never give treatment. The entire medical profession wants to get rid of me but feels it is unethical to kill me. I think you don't believe but I have as hard a time believing this one as you would. My next question to the lady doctor was, Madam, if I have no heart problem, why have I 
been admitted to a coronary care unit. She answered, no this is a general ward. I did not say a word but when I was wheeled I think I saw a board saying coronary care unit. I can show a page from my medical records from UHK and show it says Skellig ward and show a clipping from the internet which says it is a coronary care unit. If I can do that, it should show readers one tiny bit of my story. That is why I was admitted to the coronary care unit at UHK Tralee. Not only that, but the other patients in the ward were all having only heart tests. I figured out that one man in my ward whose wife was with him was dying. All this should be evidence that I wasn't in a coronary ward and that I was probably admitted there because I have a heart problem. So at the end of three days in Skellig ward, I was sitting on my bed and crying boohoo. I want my medical records I want. My diagnosis. They said no. Then one young doctor gave me my ECG because I kept asking for it. Then the consultant came in and said, I am the boss here. Nobody gives you anything without my permission. You cannot have that ECG. I cried to the consultant if I didn't give my diagnosis, I would commit suicide. You know how they deal with suicide these days. You have to only say the word and they will call those specially gifted women to keep you company and help to overturn your suicide wish. But this was not the larger society. This was a hospital the consultant said he was going to call a psychiatrist. I was scared because the psychologist might section me. The consultant ordered his staff that I should wait for the psychiatrist. One nurse, God bless her soul, helped me to escape from that place. She allowed me to go and buy a Coca-Cola. I had to take a lift. Once I got into the lift, I hit the ground floor button. I calmly walked out of the exit. I didn't run anywhere. I had to phone for a taxi from UHK reception on the ground floor. The station or town was not within walking distance. I had to stand outside the entrance and wait for the taxi for half an hour or so. Maybe that kind of nurse didn't tell the consultant I had left. Maybe the psychiatrist took a really long time to come. Whatever the case, luck was on my side. I took the taxi and reached the station. I was able to take a bus from the trolley station to Kalani Station. I was staying at Kalani at Railway Hostel. It was across the road from the station. When I was safely back at the Backpackers Hostel, the Garda arrived. They had been sent by the consultant of Skellig Ward UHK. It was very unfortunate that I told the hospital where I lived, or, at least was staying for a short term. Otherwise, they would have never been able to set the cops after me. Well, I told the police that I had left the hospital against medical advice but I was doing perfectly okay. I assured them that I would call the hospital and try to speak to them. I would ask the hospital to let me go so I got the name and number of Skellig Ward from the police and phoned them, assuring I am okay. The guard I left, as I appeased the consultant, even though I spoke only to a nurse. But the staff at Railway Hostel had something a lot more unpleasant for me. From the guard I's visit of a few minutes duration, the railway staff understood police wanted to talk to me because I was wanted by some psychiatrist. The railway staff member said this place is for holiday makers. This place is for happy people. We cannot have you here. So off to the next part of my medical story. In comes the pandemic.